NFC offers the opportunity to say there are other drivers of the business case, such as the ability to do mobile marketing and advertising and couponing that are relevant to uh, both the consumer and the merchant as they interact in a much more fluid uh, way with digital technology. So in that sense, NFC payments in 2011 really offer a breakthrough opportunity uh, to not only change the nature of, of what the transaction environment looks like, by the way, not just offline in the point of sale, but also online, uh, it offers the opportunity to bring people together that haven't worked out together in a collaborative way uh, to enhance this buyer-seller interaction. Uh, so I think the, all the elements of the infrastructure, such as the, uh, the handsets, the chips in the handsets, to a large degree are being subsidized or already being put into play uh, and not waiting for the, the classic old payment fee um, allocation or split uh, to determine uh, whether people are going to do this stuff or not. Uh, it's going to be on new value propositions going forward. That's very exciting. NFC infrastructure and the ability to do enhanced two-way location aware, um, uh, fully digital interactions puts the transaction in the hands of those people who can best enhance that experience. That could be banks, it could be wireless carriers, it could be application providers, it's certainly going to be the merchants, uh, it could be the consumers, it could be uh, elements and functions in the handsets or in the POS terminals. So everybody now really has a stake to think about how they can add to the quote unquote mobile ecosystem and begin to think about how that new infrastructure really does uh, represent the vanguard for reform of the old MagStripe physical card payment system. that has been around and served well for four or five uh, uh, decades but it's clearly outlived lived its usefulness. It's too costly, it's too fraud prone, um, it creates uh, ungodly expenses like uh, PCI compliance. Um, we've spent enough in the United States on PCI compliance since 2004 to implement EMV chip plus PIN three times over. Bringing all these other stakeholders to the, the party gives you an opportunity to say, uh, let's reinvent the payment system around this interactive two-way um, digitally smart uh, kind, of, kind of mechanism and get away from everything that's held us back in the MagStripe world. So the buzzword around the conference has been a re release of a uh, wire from uh, uh, Visa last week where they said, uh, contrary to some uh, controversy that had uh, formed up over the past few months, that if you were to move to EMV chip plus PIN as part of the transition to NFC contactless technology, would merchants be off the hook from these PCI compliance costs uh, that have grown so onerous? They clarified that position uh, last week in this uh, public release where they said in every one of their five regions except the United States uh, and North America, if a merchant did more than 75% of their transactions at the point of sale with the EMV chip plus PIN cards, then they wouldn't have to do an annual PCI audit. Well, that's throwing a bone, but it's a useful bone for all those merchants in every place outside the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Unfortunately, they didn't do that uh, in North America, and they didn't do it for, certainly in the United States. Instead, in their public release, they said uh, on the economic uncertainties related to the Durban Amendment and its uh, reduction of debit card rates, as proposed by the Fed, uh, made it uh, an untenable environment for looking at bringing new technology, such as EMV chip plus pen, uh, to the forefront. Uh, that means that everybody who's in the mobile ecosystem really needs to get back and in, in, in support the Fed in trying to re use it to help reform the payment system, most notably moving to EMV chip, chip plus pin as soon as we can, with, hopefully with the Fed's help.